Um, so before I get started, I just want to acknowledge that the University of Alberta is located on Treaty 6 territories and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of the Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada whose cultures and histories uh, continue to um, expand on our vibrant community. So here's a little layout of how this session will go. Um, so we're gonna go over the important bits that you need to make sure that you get done after you've applied uh, and you've been admitted to make sure that you can be prepared, in fact, to register in your courses. Um, we're gonna go over what elements of your degree kind of will come into play when you're choosing classes, give you a little rundown of kind of how that works to hopefully help you understand your degree. Um, we're going to go over your program requirements and how to find your program requirements as well. Uh, and then we were gonna go over setting up your first year enrollment. So I know this is the, the, the meme potatoes. You wanna know what classes am I taking? What am I supposed to, what am I supposed to fulfill my, my class schedule with? Um, so we'll get into that for you. And then we'll also do a little bit of Bear Tracks basics, but we do have lots of self-guided modules, videos, and all of that stuff available on our um, Registration 101 webpage. So that'll be at the link below here, uab.ca slash reg101. Um, so if you have anything more so about that, I would point you in that direction first. If you have questions about bear tracks, how to do this on bear tracks or anything like that, um, but we'll go over a little bit today. All right, so first things first, after you apply and you've been admitted, if you're here, chances are you've been admitted. If not, you're really ahead of the game, <laughs> um, but that's okay. Um, before you can register in courses though, you do need to accept your offer and with accepting your offer, you do need to pay your tuition deposit. So this money will go directly towards your fees as a student. Um, it's just kind of confirmation. Yep, I'm accepting this offer. I'm coming to the U of A um, and telling us that you're serious and that's what's gonna allow you to be able to register in classes. And we do note that it can take up to three business days for this payment to process before you actually have access in bear tracks. So with the registration date, I'll say this a couple times throughout the session, but the registration date will, when you can actually enroll in classes is April 4th. So you will definitely want to get on paying that deposit and accepting your offer before then to make sure that you can get on to all of your classes and to avoid any delays. So you have, by now you've probably become familiar with our launch pad, which is our um, admission uh, application portal. Um, well, once you've accepted your offer and you've done everything you need to do in launch pad, eventually you will transition over to bear tracks, which is going to be your main hub. This is where you'll be able to manage your classes. So your exam schedule, as well as your class schedule, this is gonna hold your transcripts. Um, it's also going to be where you'll pay your tuition and any fees you have um, so and all of that good stuff. So it's got it's a really helpful tool and one that you definitely want to become familiar with early on. Um, so there's lots of different functionalities in here, some of them listed on the side, and I will go over most of these throughout the session. So first things first, I also want to flag that, like I said, we have self-guided modules. So if I'm going over things and you're like, oh my gosh, I need another session or I need to be able to see all this kind of at my own pace, we did create a course for you um, that will walk you through kind of every step of the registration process to make sure that um, you know, you're supported in picking those classes because we know it can be a really stressful time. As exciting of a time as it is, it can also be really stressful. Um, so we have all of these resources available for you. And we also have videos on this, on that webpage that I mentioned, uib.ca slash reg101. Um, and that's also where you'll find um, this self-guided course on there. And I'm always making little updates and adjustments. So um, if you're like, oh, there wasn't something on there, maybe check back. Maybe I've added it. <laughs> so let's dive into understanding your degree. So you're entering a totally new system. It's no longer the Alberta education system. You don't have a counselor who's going to walk you through every step of the way. So let's break it down a little bit so that it's a little bit more uh, easily understood for you. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the credit system. So in university, our courses are assigned credit hours, which are notated um, with the asterisks or star. Um, so half your courses are worth three credits and they run for one term. And our terms are a little bit different than they were in your high, 
high schools. Um, so half your courses are typically from September to December and January till April. Um, and full year courses will run that entire span. So it'll be from September to April. Um, we also have spring and summer courses, but those are a different semester, um, which I just have right here. Um, so we have those four terms. If you were to complete um, a full course load in both fall and winter, which is usually where students mainly um, schedule their courses in these two semesters, then you would uh, complete your degree in four years. So that would be a full course load. It would be the maximum allowed um, and you would be able to do that. Um, if you wanted to take spring and summer classes, something to note is that you wouldn't be able to start with those. So if your admission offer is for fall 2023, that means that you wouldn't be able to take courses this upcoming spring and summer. Um, I've got a lot of questions often about students wanting to like do it to settle in. Truthfully, we wouldn't even recommend that because these courses are condensed. So we have a maximum of only two courses being taken in one of these shorter semesters. Um, so that that wouldn't really be a possibility. But in the future, if you decide, you know what, I want to try it out. I want to do spring and summer classes in that condensed period. Maybe you want to take fewer classes than fall and winter and still complete in four years. Um, then that is still an option for you. So in your Bachelor of Arts or most of the arts degrees from the Faculty of Arts, we um, all, well, all undergraduate degrees at the U of A are worth 120 credits. Uh, unless you're looking at a combined degree, but that will be something different. Um, so with 120 credits, with each course being worth three, you can imagine it'll take a little while to get up there to finish all those requirements. So 63 of those credits need to be from the Faculty of Arts. But when I'm saying these numbers, truthfully, you're entering your first year. So these numbers won't be super, super relevant just yet. You're taking your 100 level classes. You're just diving in. You're not going to be worrying about meeting your minimums or maximums for your degree. But it's just good to hear it so that it's in the back of your mind as you're planning your degree, as you're moving throughout the courses and all that good stuff. The stuff that is important is the common requirements that I recommend. And also we do have some requirements to complete them early on, um, but getting them done earlier on in your degree is just a really good way to kind of help yourself have some structure and then kind of figure out what you really are interested in. So the first one being three credits in junior English. So this will be an English class that is uh, denoted as either ENGL 100 level or WRS 100 level. So the reason we want this one done as uh, early on in your degree, we recommend either your first year or um, first semester of your second year at the latest. Uh, the reason we want this done early is because as you move throughout your degree, you're gonna have to do assignments and essays and all of that good stuff. So this is a really great class to take early on um, to understand what are the expectations in university level writing um, and understanding comprehension of, of writing and all of that good stuff. So definitely wanna get that done early on. Um, we also have our six credits in a language other than English. So if you took a high school level language such as like Spanish 30, German 30, or French 30. Um, this won't actually be a requirement for you. These six credits will be allocated to basically whatever you want. Um, but if you have not taken a language, then these you'll be able to take a completely entry level language course to fulfill this requirement. So you could take uh, you know, like a French course or American Sign Language for someone who's never ever even engaged with it, you know, like bonjour, as basic as it gets, and that's all good. Um, then we have six credits from a subject not from the Faculty of Arts. So lots of people ask me about this. Um, th these are going to be courses uh, that you'll take from either the Faculty of Science, maybe the Faculty of Business, um, the Faculty of Education, or Agriculture, Life, and Environmental Sciences. Uh, the thing with these courses is um, you will want to make sure that you're looking at the prerequisites for the classes, as well as if they are available to you. So I just said the Faculty of Education and Business, a lot of those classes are restricted. There are a few classes that some students not in those programs can take um, if you were interested in that. But for the most part, students usually go over to the Faculty of Science or the Faculty of ALES to take those classes. Um, and they're just another way to make sure that you're getting an interdisciplinary education um, and give you a chance to, to dip your toes into other subject areas. 
So then we have your major and minor requirements. So your major is your main area of study in your degree program. This is gonna be the thing that you're really passionate about, really excites you. It's really, you know, kind of the field you're heading towards um, or at least believe you're heading towards because it can change. <laughs> Um, and your minor is gonna be kind of like a secondary level of focus. So in the Faculty of Arts, you can have one or more majors, you can have one or more minors, you don't have to have a minor, um, you can have a certificate added on, there's tons of different options, it's very flexible, but one thing to keep in mind is that you do need to complete a minimum level of credits for it to be a major or a minor, um, and you can also take minors from other faculties, such as you could do a major in linguistics from the Faculty of Arts, and then a minor in maybe biology, that would be possible, but um, you can't do a double major between two different faculties, so that's just also something to keep in mind. Um, so like you wouldn't be able to do a double major in English and chemistry, that wouldn't be possible just because you have to major in your home faculty. And if you go into a science, then that wouldn't obviously be a major offered by the Faculty of Arts. Um, so yeah, again, these are just kind of some general numbers just to give you a teaser of kind of things you need to keep in mind as you move throughout your degree. And then we have options and electives. So you might be familiar with options courses. I know there are some, some that you get to take in high school. Um, and these are gonna be courses that you take outside of your common requirements, your major and your minor. So these courses can be outside of the Faculty of Arts, but there is a maximum that 18 can be taken outside of the Faculty of Arts or Science. So you do wanna be cautious of how many you're taking because if you take too many courses in one of these categories where we have these restrictions, then it will be considered extra to your degree and won't actually count towards those 120 credits that make up a four-year degree, quote unquote, four-year degree that I spoke of earlier. Um, so same thing for junior level courses. So going into your first year, you don't have any 100 level courses completed yet, um, but you can complete a maximum of 16. So the reason this would be important is keeping in mind that 100 levels are typically prerequisites for higher level courses. So for example, if you're interested in psychology and you wanna take, um, if you take Psych 104 and Psych 105, uh, or if you didn't take those, I guess, actually, and you started off your first year and you were like, I just wanna kind of dabble in a bunch of different courses and you took a full course load of 100 credits, or sorry, of 10 courses um, at 100 level, and then you move on, you might work your way up to that maximum of 16 courses. And then it's like, oh no, I have to take the 100 level that would be a prerequisite for a later class. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind going into your first year, it's not too much of a stress, but just as you're working through things, you know, if there's a major that you're maybe considering or an area that you're like, maybe I wanna go into that, definitely look at getting that 100 level basis course for it um, completed earlier rather than later. So as I said, quotations um, of the four-year degree. So all of our bachelor's degrees are technically considered a four-year degree. However, if you reduce your course load um, per year or per semester, maybe you're taking arts work experience or you have a part-time job or you wanna be really involved in extracurriculars and leave time for that, um, there is tons of flexibility specifically with our Faculty of Arts degrees to be able to make space for that. Um, and if you extend your, your studies by you know, taking a lower course load, uh, we have here you know, that a full-time course load can be anything from three to five classes. So if you go down to four classes for a semester, it, you'll still be doing the degree, you'll still be a full-time student. It will just extend the fact that you need to take classes later on. Um, because the only way to complete it in four years is if you either take you know, five um, per semester in our fall and winter semesters, or if you uh, went down a number, then you kind of fill in those, those spaces through your spring and summer semesters. And then a part-time course load, which is also an option for students in the Bachelor of Arts would be things um, if you were taking courses, uh, only one or two per semester. So this is kind of a little visual of what it would look like if you were to, to complete your degree in four years. So this is also only taking car courses in the fall and winter term. And a lot of students do choose to focus their coursework on only fall and winter terms. 
Um, for me personally, I had to do a summer job to be able to pay for university. Um, so that's a very common route. Uh, you know, you get four months off to be able to work, enjoy your summer um, and kind of refresh getting ready for another year. Um, so this is kind of the common way that we structure our degree and why we call it a four year degree. So as I mentioned, you can add on certificates to your um, Faculty of Arts degrees. You can take certificates that are offered by the Faculty of Arts. You can also look into some other certificates offered by other faculties, such as the sustainability certificate offered by the Faculty of Ales or um, some other uh, certificates offered by other faculties, but you just wanna make sure that you're fulfilling those requirements. But the fun thing about these is that they're actually really easy to work into your degrees um, and uh, a lot of the requirements do overlap. So it can make it really um, seamless to add into your studies. So let's go over a little bit of your specific program requirements. So unfortunately, I can't go over every single degree offered by the Faculty of Arts because it would take me much longer <laughs> than an hour and a half session. It might take me a whole week, honestly, um, to go through all the nuances. But I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself so that you can figure out how, what your requirements are and empower yourself that I know you can do this. Um, if I could do it in my undergrad, I am absolutely certain that you can figure out your requirements, but I do know it's scary. So let's just go over a little bit of kind of how it would look. So this is the academic calendar and it is going to become truthfully your best friend. As you work through your degree, um, you're going to refer to this a lot. People are gonna tell you to refer to it for your requirements um, and for regulations. Um, and once you get familiar with it, it is not nearly as scary as it seems with all of its links and lists and dates. Um, so I'll just go through a little bit of how, how you would navigate this. So, you see here, we have on the on the left side bar, um, the undergraduate programs. This is exactly what it looks like, by the way, if you go to the university calendar and you can just type in U of A calendar and this should come up, or you could just type in uab.ca slash calendar and um, the calendar will pop up um, and this will be the first page. So on the, on the left here, you'll see undergraduate programs and everything that is the color green and underlined is a hyperlink that will take you either to a new page or open up um, kind of a panel underneath. So we, we're in an undergraduate program, bachelor's degree is an undergraduate, so we're gonna click on that one. And then it's gonna take us to this page that's gonna show us all of the undergraduate programs um, for all of the faculties under our new college system. And so we see the Faculty of Arts, that's what we're in. So we're gonna select that one. And then it's gonna take us to all the degrees and certificates offered from the Faculty of Arts. Um, so if you wanted to you know, look around, see, oh, what other degrees are there? What would the requirements be for those? You can absolutely do that in the calendar and have a little peek at that. Um, but we're gonna just focus on the main, the Bachelor of Arts, just to make sure that we're catching as many folks as we can. So we're gonna click on the Bachelor of Arts um, if you scroll down, it's going to have your common requirements and all of that good stuff, which we already went through. Um, and those were that three, those three categories I talked about, English, language other than English, and uh, non-arts. So then we're going to go to our major requirements. So these are going to be the requirements um, that you need to fulfill your specific major. And every Bachelor of Arts degree does require at least one major. Um, so here we can see all of the different majors offered from the Faculty of Arts. Um, and just for the sake of this, we're going to go and look at the psychology requirements. So here you'll see it'll pull up all of the courses that are needed in order to complete this entire degree. So this is not just your first year. So as you can see, there's 200 level courses on this. Um, we don't expect you to complete those all in your first year. This is a whole snapshot of what is required to complete the entire degree. So don't get overwhelmed by that. Really hone in on the 100 level courses because like I said, those are the ones you wanna get done early on because they're prerequisites for other courses. So for this one, you're going to see, you know, Psych 104, Psych 105, Statistics is a requirement as well. Um, and then you're seeing 300, 400 level right now. That's not our focus. We're in our first year. We're just getting into classes. So, you know, there's three or maybe four if you wanted to take your other math requirement as well early on um, that you're, you're looking at here for your major. So that's one thing to consider. 
And then if you wanted to check out a specific class, you can actually click on that class. Like I said, um, everything that's green and underlined is a hyperlink. So if you click on it, it's going to show you a little bit about the class. So here it's saying it's an undergraduate course. It's worth three credits. Um, their approved hours are three, just like we said, the, the course credit hours. The faculty is, that is offered by is the Faculty of Arts, um, the Department Psychology, and it's typically offered in either term. So this can be really useful to look at because some courses are only offered in a certain term, um, whether that's the fall term, winter term, spring, summer, typically it's fall or winter. Um, so it's something just to keep in mind when you're planning your schedules and it'll probably become more important as you work through your degree and there are you know, requirements that you need specifically or a class that you really wanna take. Um, and it also has a little description about what the class is about. Um, so for example, this one is developmental psychology and it has a little description and it also lists the prerequisites. So you won't be able to take this class until you have completed Psych 104 and Psych 105. So that's why taking those 100 levels early on as prerequisite courses is really um, informative. Okay. Also a lot of information. I'm gonna take a deep breath. You <laughs> should do. I'm also gonna have just a sip of water. All right, I hope everybody is still with me. I know this is a lot of information, but I promise you're gonna be a whiz at it in no time. So let's talk about how you're going to set up your first year of enrollment. So we've gone over requirements. We've talked about the fact that you have major requirements. Um, and students always ask me, what should my schedule look like? Well, this is an example of what your schedule could look like. So like I said, you want to get that English in there as early on as you can. Again, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Just take it the next year or the next semester. Um, just more of a recommendation. And because it is a class that every single, oh, it's time to be real, that's funny. <laughs> um, I hope I'm in some people's be reals. That would be really fun for me. <laughs> Anyways, um, so your 100 level English um, will be in there. Uh, you'll wanna take a cla the classes for towards your majors um, and your minors. And then, like I said, language other than English. If you don't take the language other than English in your first year, that's totally okay. Um, there isn't really a, a rush for those ones. Uh, the main thing we recommend is taking them in adjacent semesters like this. So a fall and a winter, um, just because that way, you know, learning language is difficult. So if you're if it's your first time at interacting with that language and then you take it in your first year, first semester, and then you don't take your second class until your fourth year, last semester, there's gonna be a huge gap um, between what you learned and then you're gonna be going back over your notes, frantically trying to learn it, probably downloading Duolingo to try to get your own little course going. So we just recommend trying to get those back to back so that you can be successful and set yourself up for, for the best best grades possible. Um, so we have lots of space for options and electives in this, but this is a full course. So this is going to be taking five classes per semester. So we can look at if we decided to only take four classes, you know, you could cut out um, some options. You could even cut out uh, one of your like a language other than English or something like that. Um, and just like this. <laughs> so you could take out that requirement for your first year, um, fill it with an option or elective. Maybe you're, you're toying between two majors. You're like, well, I really love sociology, but I also love psychology or linguistics or history. Um, you can absolutely fit those in into your first year, especially just so that you can kind of see what those classes are like, uh, see what you're learning, see which side you kind of gravitate towards. You could also, like I said, that English course, if it's not taken in your first year, this is me just proving to you that it's not its not the end of the world if you can't take it, okay? Um, it fills up really quickly, so we don't want you to panic. You're gonna be able to get the requirement. You're gonna be able to get the class. You could cut down if you wanted to, to less classes. This is still a full-time student schedule right here. Even if you went down to three classes in your first semester, maybe you're like, oh, well, I'm finishing my part-time job or whatever, or I need to work more that time, or I really wanna make sure that I'm doing really well and I wanna ease into university. 
all of these things are options for you. You don't have to stress about fitting it exactly the way you think it should be or what people have told you it should be. Make yourself a schedule that works for you and that will lead you to being as successful and, and comfortable with what you're learning as possible. There's no need to force yourself into the four-year university box as long as you have you know, the resources and you understand the timeline that that will extend it to, that's all good. It's not the end of the world. I personally took five years to complete my degree and I am so grateful for that extra year, not only because it gave me an extra year to be a student at the U of A, which is the reason why I now work for the U of A because I love it so much, um, but also because it gave me an opportunity to really take my time and to engage with student groups and still be really successful in my classes because I had that extra time um, kind of built in by, by taking a little bit extra to study um, to finish my degree. So when we're filling out these schedules and stuff, like I said, I've already kind of touched on this because that's how important they are. Um, what prerequisite classes are required is something you should always be asking yourself. Which classes have the fewest offerings or are a de uh, degree requirement for many programs such as English? Um, are you more of someone who gets up really early and want to get your day done and then have the afternoon to do whatever, whether that's studying, part-time job, relax, whatever you need? Um, or are you someone who would rather rather sleep in, go to class later in the afternoon. Of course, these things are not always going to be something that you can manipulate. Some classes are only offered at a certain time um, and you might need to, to kind of um, work within those restraints. But for the most part, you get to build a schedule that works for you and you get to build it around the way that you work, learn best, the way that you study best. Um, so really, I want you to be empowered to make those decisions and to not, like I said, try to fit yourself into a box. Um, and also considering what building the classes are in so that, you know, if you're someone who loves to run between classes, absolutely put your classes on other sides of campus. Great chance to get some fresh air. Um, but if you're the, the type of person that's like, no, I'd rather grab a coffee between classes and maybe meander and take my time, um, then give yourself classes that are closer together. This is all up to you. You get to build this how you want. Of course, like I said, there are the restraints of, you know, scheduling and the fact that uh, you don't get to pick when your classes necessarily are offered, um, but it's something that you do have a little bit of control over. So like I said, prerequisites, here's an example. I know economics is a common major for a lot of students or a minor. So one thing to keep in mind is if you're really planning to um, you know, move through economics at a pretty rapid pace, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're taking Econ 101 first because it's a prerequisite to 102. Um, so if that was something you were considering and now you're like, oh my gosh, I need to make sure, like maybe you take 101 in the winter, but you also wanna take 102 in winter. Sometimes that can't be possible if classes are um, prerequisites to each other. Sometimes it can be possible if they are co-requisites, which means they are to be taken together. Um, but prerequisites, you wanna make sure that you're taking them in the order that they're intended. So another one, like we said, availability of classes, because every single student at the U of A is required to take at least one English class or writing studies, they can fill up pretty quickly. So this is a good one to have prepared um, to be ready to enroll in it uh, earlier on if that's what your plan is. Um, if you're not worried about getting it early on, that's also okay. Um, like I said, but uh, classes like this, or if there's maybe a class that's only offered once for the whole year, maybe think about getting into that one really early on as well to make sure that you can secure your seat before they fill up. So now we'll just do a little bit of basics with Bear Tracks. So Bear Tracks is um, the portal that gives you access to most things involved in your university career. Uh, later on, you will learn about eClass, which is where you will actually do your class material. Um, but this is where you'll sign up for classes, pay your deposits, pay your tuition, your fees. Um, this is where you'll pull your transcript. This is also where if you need proof of enrollment or anything like that for you know, a summer job, an opportunity, study abroad, whatever you're looking at, this is where you'll be going for that. Um, and this is where you'll plan and build your timeline or your timetable and all of that good stuff. 
Oh, I should also flag to sign in, you will use your CCID and your password. So if you're having any troubles accessing those, you'll definitely wanna contact our um, information services desk um, for support in getting that set up if you've lost it or if you don't remember your password or anything like that. But it's going to be the same as your UAlberta email and your password to sign into your UAlberta email. So hopefully you're, you've been checking that. Um, if you haven't, maybe try to log in. Um, and if not, get some support in, in getting into there. Um, but that will be your login for Bear Tracks as well. Basically, everything will be, we have what's called a single sign-on, um, which means that all of our portals and stuff will be connected uh, with this DCID. That's how you'll sign into all of your, all of your university um, portals and systems. So there are two ways to search for a class. One would be browse the course catalog. And this is where you kind of can just search up a keyword. So you could type in psychology and it will bring up all the courses under that. Um, when you do that, there will be options to kind of um, finesse I don't think that's the right word, but to finesse your search, <laughs> you'll be able to click on the um, on the specifics of what you need, undergraduate program, you're looking for an offer from the Department of Psychology, maybe in the Faculty of Arts, whatever you're kind of looking for specifically. And you can see all of the different courses that are offered in those um, in that search um, that you're doing. So then this is another way to search for classes. So perhaps you just heard me say Psych 104 and Psych 105 and you're like, yep, I know I need those classes. I'm a psych major, psych minor. I love psychology and I just am doing it for fun. Um, you can search it up specifically what terms it's offered in through search and enroll. And this is a, a really quick way to do it. So for this example, oh, and there's the, the um, why can't I think of a word other than finesse? I don't know, but there's the way to finesse your search. <laughs> um, so you could click on, you know, the subject, undergraduate, making sure it's equal to three credits, um, all of that good stuff. But this will pull up all of the classes that are offered. And then here you will see um, the, the specifics of the course. So these ones are to be announced here, um, but you can either enroll in the class directly from here if it's past April 4th date, which is once they are available for enrollment, um, or you can hit cart and you can add it to your shopping cart. So if you add it to your shopping cart, that means that it'll be added to, um, if you see on the left there, um, the shopping cart and watch list. So it'll be in there, prepared for you to add to your planner um, and then enroll in later if that's the route you decide to go. <laughs> We've got some sneezes. <laughs> um, so to add a class, like I said, you can hit that enroll button or you can add it to your cart, um, but you will can also it validate a course. So if you need to validate a course, that will just make sure that there's no other courses offered at the same time that you're already enrolled in. It will also make sure automatically for you that the prerequisites have been completed. So say you were looking at that psychology developmental course we were looking at, it would automatically tell you, oh, you haven't taken Psych 104 or Psych 105 yet, you won't be able to enroll in that without you having to try to enroll it and then get the, the error message. So it's kind of just a, a little, another security blanket um, to make sure that you can plan your schedule accordingly. So here's what that will look like at the bottom. Um, so you can enroll in it and you can validate there, or you could just add it to your watch list if the class was full, which I'll go over in just a second here. So we want to enroll. We've clicked enroll. It's ensuring, are you sure you want to enroll? Yes, maybe no, maybe you've changed your mind. Um, and then it'll give you a message to let you know this class has been added to your schedule. So this is really important on April 4th or after then when you're really getting into those classes and building your schedule. When you get this green check mark, that means that it's in there, it's in your classes, you're enrolled, you are now um, expected to you know, pay your tuition, show up to class, do your exams for this class. It's in there, okay? Um, so like I said, you can also uh, use our other tools on Bear Tracks. So let's say you enrolled in five classes and then you're like, you know what? I don't wanna do five. You can just drop one. And if you do so before September 18th, there will be no penalty. You won't have to pay for that course um, and you won't receive any anything on your transcript. It'll just be wiped. It'll just disappear, gone. Um, if you use the swap classes tool. So for example, if you were looking at taking maybe 
maybe you were in Psych 104 and then you were like, never mind, I want to take uh, Econ 101 in that spot instead. But you know that Psych 104 is a hot commodity class and you don't want to lose your spot in that class. And Econ 101 is also a hot commodity class. So if you use the swap class tool, um, Bear Tracks will only drop the class that you're swapping. So this is the Psych 104, really good visual here. Um, I don't even know if you can see me actually <laughs> set up. Um, but if you decided to, um, to swap those classes, but Econ 101 wasn't actually available, someone snagged that last seat before you had a chance to hit swap classes, it won't drop Psych 104. So you still have it in the back in your um, schedule. Um, it won't automatically just drop it and be like, well, now you have no classes. It will make sure that you stay, that you always, like the swap is always successful. And if it's not successful, then it doesn't drop the class. Whereas if you do drop a class and then try to pick up a class, your class that you dropped could fill up by the time you go back to get it. So it's just something to keep in mind. And like, it's usually not that serious. <laughs> like, um, it's more so for those hot commodity classes, you know, like the English is, English is one of those courses that typically fills up really quickly. So if you're, if you're looking to swap between Englishes, um, definitely use a swap. Um, if you're like, I just don't want to take English in this semester, it's just not what I'm up for, um, then you can just use the drop class tool. And the watch list is intended to be used for any classes um, that are full. So let's say you've already looked, it's April 4th and you're like, oh my gosh, it's already full. You can put a class on your watch list, which means that the university program will automatically send you a notification whenever this class um, has a seat available. So you can set it up to send you a text message or an email. Um, I've tried both. I haven't figured out if one's faster than the other, but I also recommend honestly checking your watch list just periodically if you're trying to get into a class. Um, I always tell everybody I've never not been able to get into a class like even if I had it on my watch list, it was a super hot commodity class I've always been able to enroll in them using this tool and just checking frequently. Um, so it shouldn't be too much of a fear there. So here's where all of those things live um, again all in bear tracks just on your on your left hand um, bar. And if you need help after this session, um, like I said, this is a lot of information and I'm, I'm really proud of you for coming to this and for you know starting to get a background, understanding your program requirements, understanding your major requirements, understanding how to even enroll in classes, how to navigate your tools available to you. This is a great first step. Um, so we're really glad that you, that you were able to make it today. Um, and this will be the link that our, all of our resources will be on. We'll have lots of videos. Um, there should be a recording of this session as well. Um, if you, if you want to rewatch me, forget the word other than finesse, <laughs> um, that will be available for you as well. Um, additionally, we will have a, another celebratory um, admitted student day. Our in-person session has already sold out, which I'm so excited for. So if you're going to be there, I can't wait to see you. But if you um, are not able to make it for any reason, maybe you're out of out of the city or uh, if you weren't able to get into that um, in-person one, then please sign up for our virtual admitted student day. Um, you can sign up at that link, uab.ca slash ASD. Um, and that will be on April 5th in the evening. So I hope I'll be able to virtually see you there. <laughs> um, so just another flag for some important dates. Like I said, April 4th is when classes will be available for registration. So you'll be able to place them in your planner, kind of pick out your classes right now. Um, and then that enroll button will become actually useful on April 4th. Um, April 30th is your last day to apply for a guaranteed spot in residence. Um, so we won't, are not experts on residents, so if you have questions about that, you can try to ask us, but it's probably best to head it over to um, our housing folks, um, and you can find their email on that webpage there, uab.ca slash residents. Um, August 1st, if you're a high school student, which I assume most of you are, um, that is when all of your uh, grades and everything needs to be done, so if you're planning to take summer school, 
please reach out to us. There might be an issue there. Um, but August 1st is just when all of those things need to be in. Um, September 5th is the first day of classes. So can't wait to see you on campus then. Um, and September 18th is that last day where you can drop classes, change your mind. Um, so if you pick classes, you know, April 4th, we understand there's a long time from April 4th until the first day of classes even, but you have, have like a two week window where if you start your classes and then you're like, I'm not ready for this right now. I can't take five classes, whatever happens, you know, we understand. So that's why that exists there. Um, and then we also have our winter term dates as well, just for kind of um, planning for your second semester. So if you have any other questions for us, you can reach out to us in a variety of different ways. Um, we're always doing events and we're always um, answering emails and doing advising sessions. Of course, as you can imagine, email volumes are a little bit high right now with, you know, lots of people are getting admitted, registrations starting to become much more prominent with it being only about, uh, oh my gosh, only like a week and a half away. Um, so please be patient with us. We will get to you as soon as possible, um, but also uh, give yourself enough time to be able to figure everything out. Um, definitely follow us on Instagram. Uh, Logan, our engagement specialist is always posting lots of cool stuff on there, um, but that's all I have for the presentation. So I think, I think we can start opening it up to the Q and A.